When you're up to your armpits in crops, how do you stalk and shoot a buck? Paul Childerly answers that question with a little help from his family and friends. <laughs> Probably went easier on you because you were his son. Yeah. Maybe. I reckon so. <laughs> <laughs> and curlews are making a comeback in Northern Ireland thanks to gamekeepers. Deborah Hadfield looks at how shooters are beating bird watchers in a conservation success story. Without predator control, I would say you'd probably get 10% of the wildlife that we have now. We have a competition for you to win a Bivy stick, a brilliant device that turns your ordinary mobile phone into a satellite phone. David is still using dial-up technology to bring you the news on the news stump, and James Marchington uses glue and string to put together the best hunting and shooting videos in hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Two row stalking outings, one goal, to get a roebuck for the 2023 game fair. <coughs> there is so much more. There's meeting Paul Childerley's gamekeeper father, Martin, for the first time, who once employed these two likely lads, obviously at different times, whose paths have crossed again thanks to the clothing brand Swazi. Paul is now working with the New Zealand Outdoor Clothing Company and Will Hogan is the new UK distributor. Both did their time with Martin. Uh, character building. I'd like, I'd like to think uh, it's made me the man who I am today. Who, 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 yes, anyway, he was a wind-up merchant, but I learned from the best. So okay. incredibly knowledgeable. Yeah, and to learn the trade off a, <laughs> off a man of that, yeah, with that knowledge and enthusiasm, it was great. I was very lucky. He come beating for me, and then he come work experience, and then he come to work, then to give him a chance. And it's quite nice when you've got somebody who, who's really keen. You know, I've had lots of people work experience lads with me, and a lot of them ain't got a clue, to be honest. And uh, yeah, some of them are a joke, but I've had some good lads with me, to be honest. So yeah, we're always one of one of them as well as Paul. You know. The reason for bagging a buck for the game fair is because top chef and author Jose Suto needs it for a deer carcass breakdown demo in the cookery theatre. So we are doubling our efforts to guarantee success. Contacted Paul and I said, I've got a really good idea. And Paul contacted me back and said, so have I. So when I <laughs> rang him, uh, he said to me, I said, he goes, you go first. I said, well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do basically a field to table of the deer that we're going to harvest and then have it at the game fair. And the game fair, we're going to break it down. And my good friend JB Gill's going to be there to help me break it down in the game fair, them larder on a Saturday. And uh, Paul said, I've had exactly the same idea. So basically, you know, great minds think alike. And here we, <laughs> here we are in the middle of the Cotswolds, basically about to go out on a stalk. We'd better get on with stalk number one for this important spark. <laughs> I've heard already how Will was scarred. So did he scar, did he scar you as well? <laughs> Uh, character building, like Will said. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, do you know what? It's quite funny. It's um, it's probably made me the boss I am. Because he's quite, like you said, he's quite a gentle soul. Yeah. He's quite, he's very calm, very quick-witted. He can cut yeah. you, cut you with a, with a bit of humour. You didn't cross him. <laughs> no, no. I, I only so, yeah. had, had a couple of crosswords once, yeah. and I knew I was in the wrong. So I learned quickly when yeah. you're in the wrong, admit it, yeah. and, and move on. Yeah, but he's, he's very quick-witted and yeah. good with numbers and. Yeah, so. Yeah. It probably went easier on you because you were his son. Yeah. Maybe. I reckon so. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with this time of year is the high cover. Unless you find an animal on a ride or straight down a tram line, you won't be able to take a body shot. So the buck's lay down in there, he's just, he won't, you won't see him walk past him. And uh, so, yeah, he's making him stand up and have a little look, maybe. The weather is not great. It's a good job Will's brought along a range of Swazi gear, a brand he first discovered as a keeper in New Zealand. With Paul's help, they're developing it for the UK and European markets. So I'm acting purely as a rep representative for them in the UK, so helping to find good retailers throughout the entire UK and Ireland. And make still looking? It, still looking very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got to be the right retailers, though. You know, Swazi is a great brand, and it's it's well known, it's well respected, and it deserves the respect to be put on the shelves in the best shops. We want it in the best places, definitely. It's made by working people for working people. Moving forward, I think we can really push it forward now. Um, we've got new lines coming through all the time, so I'm, I'm optimistic. But that's the salesman talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Once through the plantation and into the open fields, we come across a six-pointer in the wheat. It's not a shot either Paul or Will recommends unless you are completely competent. Young six pointer. Very thin and spiky. That's where he's on that open bit. He might get a clear shot here. See him right? Yeah. Christened. <laughs> what is that you're using tonight? That's new 90. Okay. Uh, the Adventure 90, yeah. We've got the uh, other models coming over. It's a 308 as well, so just keep an eye on it. Make sure he, he went down slightly right? slightly yeah. slower than I wanted him to. I don't know, did you see that, Will? Yeah, it was all right. uh, yeah so he went down. <coughs> All I've got to do is keep an extra eye on him and just stand him crop. It's the rifle that took on from the Finlight 2. Um, great, great features like the Finlight 2, obviously cheek piece, nice um, soft hand grip. And I've got all the new bits on with the 90 now, with the, with the trigger and the, the uh, system, bolt system. And he's still got the favourite metal magazine. Which is Can I go back just two seconds? You yep. said about why would you spend more, pay more attention because it's a 308? Why did I pay more attention? You said I'm going to keep an eye because it's 308. So why, why did you say that? Because I don't shoot a 308 very often. <laughs> um, it's really funny. You get, you get your calibers that you're used to. The, and a 308 is just... I like it for bigger animals, body shooting, boar. The next shooting a row, at, how far was it in the end? I think he was probably... Yeah, 146. One not bad. I'm learning. Not bad, Will. Yeah, 153, 14. Yeah, 149. So 150. So off the sticks, 150. Um, yeah, you just have to. Not that you always concentrate. You do always concentrate every single shot, but the calibers you're used to, you do think, Will, you're used to your calibre. You, just, you get, get used to what you use, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. When you have to change, you chop and change so much, though. I know. So, and it, yeah, and I it, don't understand it. I've got 243 and 308, and that's all I stick to. Yeah. And I'm awful with both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like 308, it blows a good hole in them. Yeah, yeah no. 308 is good, 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 good round, but yeah. it's. Um, I do change, you know, different guns, different models, different scopes. Are you, are you using the, the copper? Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah, back, back to the copper, the old. The powerhead. Yeah, the blade, 162 grain blade. Again, it's a big bit of lead for, you know. Great copper. Big bit. Of, oh yeah, copper. <laughs> copper. No, we have to get get used to saying all these new yeah, sayings. Yeah, it's a good big bit of copper. Yeah, big big bit big of big copper. Big. Yeah, big, big bit of copper. <laughs> 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 big copper. I have to make a new saying up. Yeah. I'm pleased that it's a rainy evening. Yeah, but that's just typical, isn't it? Yeah. Any that's other it. text profusion would be perfect. Yeah. Think, yeah, yeah, we'll just bump into yeah. everywhere. I was a bit wrong. Yeah, he's, he's very, quite, thick, very yeah. thin, long brow tines on him. Good one to get, actually. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a fair shot. Oh, thanks, Will. I'll take that. David never gives me any compliments, apart from when I saved his life. I don't know if I mentioned that. No. no. Oh, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I happen to have to watch it a couple of times. You're all right. <laughs> we have an animal for Jose if we struggle when he joins us in a couple of days. It will be a blue peter buck, one we prepared earlier. Obviously a high neck shot because obviously the crop. I wanted to make sure it's free from the uh, top of the crop. Okay, yeah. so just to explain that, so we don't do a lot of neck shooting, Paul, you know, we tend to yeah. do the body stuff. So yeah, but that's wh what, where would, where's the actual ideal spot for that? Well, this is the thing, I, I asked if you're okay neck shoot tonight because I knew it's got tall grass like we were before and the, the standing crop. Um, you know, basically you've got a lot, you know, row in the summer haven't got a lot of fur, so you, you basically got the first inch of flesh and sinew, and you've got the windpipe. Okay, so you can feel that there. So that's what you've got. That between the two thumbs is your, is your, uh, I'll do from here, down here, that's your sort of like target, target area. Obviously anything in the windpipe's absolutely nightmare. I hit him just underneath the ear there. Um, straight down. Yeah, very pleased with that. Cracking buck, great condition. Um, but a good one to take really, you know, it's, it's a younger buck, 
thin book. There's a lot of books. We haven't shot many books on here, so we need to take, take one or two off. Um, yeah, ASAP, really. So we've been too busy doing other things, David. How's your buck fever? No, not a tremor. Really? Why is that then tonight, then? A little bit? I, 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 I actually don't know why. I just enjoyed it more tonight. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, was, I don't know if you noticed, I was actually, I was pumping straight away. I was quite excited. Did you not get that, Will? It was oozing out of you. Yeah, <laughs> oozing out of you. Yeah. What about you, Will? How's your ooze? I'm fine. Well, I'm actually, yeah, I'll survive. Uh, <laughs> nice. No, I'll, I'll give you that. It was all right. Obviously, you learned well from your father. <laughs> uh, if you'd missed, I, I wouldn't have been able to let you forget it. <laughs> I wouldn't have told anyone either. So. No, it was a good shot. Yeah. Talking of Martin, a keeper all his life, David asks him what's been the biggest change or shift over his 40-year career. I can remember back in about 1972-73, I was in on a neighbouring shoot where I was loading and they used to have two syndicates, two double, ten double gun days in each syndicate. Then we come to about the third or fourth year we are doing that and then all of a sudden the head keeper said this is going to be a change. Today we've got an orange Arms merchant and, and scrap de dealers are taking the day. And he said, this is a new, unheard of on this estate because it's all meant for lords and gentry. This is the first thing. And he said, and this is what the thing is going to be to come. This is the shooting that's going to be to come, the vet shooting. And he was right. You know, and so, so what you're saying is that you saw a move from the, the sort of gentry side of it to, right, yeah. to, to basically working class business people who had money, disposable income, and this is what they were wanted to do. That's right, yeah, and and also also things have changed as in like commercial shooting, put the value in gamekeeping. So you know the gamekeepers, what when I first started we was on agricultural wage, wage, which was then, then about ten pounds a week with married with, with a child, which is nothing, and pound per hundred birds shot, <laughs> and to what people are earning nowadays. Yeah. Wow, what a uh, difference! Yeah, what a difference! Mm. Stalk number two, and of course, Jose would like to be able to tell his own rose stalking story in front of the Game Fair audience. For those of you who haven't come across Jose before, he's responsible for educating and inspiring thousands of young chefs passing through Westminster Kingsway College into a healthy appreciation of game. I'm a senior chef lecturer at Westminster Kingsway College, and some of you will know that by it being the premier catering college in the UK. So names such as basically Jamie Oliver went there. Some of the guys that you'll see on Great British Menu and, and uh, you know, Master Chef, the professionals, all that sort of stuff, he said, we teach those guys at work. Why game? Why are you so keen on game? Why are you a specialist in game? <laughs> I suppose the thing for me was when I was a young chef, if you cook a piece of beef, you can have lots of different types of, of beef, you know, coming from different breeds of beef, and it, and it will cook it's slightly different, but a steak's a steak. And for me, the differences between the six deer species that we have here in the UK and sort of, I think it's up to about 17 species of other game animals that we have, um, makes it a phenomenal product for chefs to use. It's an exciting product. Yeah, you know, it's a product that only comes at certain times of the year. It's the most natural product that we can possibly use. It's, um, it's the thing that basically our ancestors used to eat. Uh, and, it, and it's good for us. You know, it's, it's a great, really great product. We shouldn't feel embarrassed or, or, you know, or, or in any way have to explain why we can, why we can go out and harvest this product and bring it to the table, because it's so outside, natural. Yeah. Jose is an experienced stalker three, and a Sacco shooter. A his Sacco 90 is in the post, so okay. for this evening, yeah. he's using pulls with his favourite sticks. Yeah. Happy? Yeah, great. Yeah. For the first hour, the only thing we get excited about is a squirrel. This is a Although we're one. sure squirrel butchery has its place, it's not the most visual show and tell. Finally, we start seeing animals. They are the wrong age and the wrong sex, but it gives us hope. We stop for a breather and a chat. What's your favourite deer then? For you? Um, I stalk a lot of rye. I get very excited when I stalk fallow because I just find them very challenging. I yeah. don't find rowers challenging. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in the words of another good friend, chef friend of mine, they do more damage than row. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, I do. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're a deer that does a heck of a lot of damage, and it's uh, and, and they breed so fast. You know, they basically uh, they grow so quickly. Yeah. As well, so. 
but the venison of a fellow is fantastic. Yeah, you know, it's really good that's, to eat. That's a favourite, then, is it? I would say it's one of my favourites. Is that yeah. like the pound for pound sort of like you know value for money for or she- the... for chefs? Um, pound for pound, it is going to be, you know, a bo- make meat to bone ratio. A fellow obviously is better than a row. With time marching on, so do we, and yet we blank. Realistically, last week was going to be the fail because it was pouring with rain and windy, and literally dropped straight into a buck. Really? Yeah. And this week, we didn't see anything else. Literally, just walked round that back, come round straight down to it, shot it, done. David was on the motorway before he knew it. But this man needs a deer for next week. Uh, so we'll... I will be out this weekend. Next week, <laughs> Jose <laughs> is not really a man to be beaten, and over the weekend he sends day. us this. But we've been out this morning, and we managed to get one. So here we go. This is the roebuck for the game fair. So don't worry, Paul, we managed to get one. So the show will go on. To discover more about the Swazi clothing range, go to swazi.co.nz. And to learn about the Sacco 90 adventure featured in this film, go to sacco.fi. Thank you, Paul, Will, Martin and Jose. And you can come and see them cutting up that deer and probably another deer in the Basque Wild Food Theatre at 1.20pm on Saturday and Sunday at the Game Fair this weekend. You can meet Will and see the full range of Swazi gear on the Hogan stand, 1114, throughout the weekend. You can also come and see me, chat to Paul and Jose at 4.20pm on Friday in the main Cartagena's Game Fair Theatre, which I am hosting for all three days of the Festival of the British Countryside at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire this weekend the 28th to the 30th of July 2023. My other guests include celebrity angler Paul Whitehouse, DEFRA secretary Therese Coffey and shadow DEFRA secretary Daniel Zeichner. We gave away five pairs of tickets to the Game Fair in Field Sports Extra this week. Next week's prize draw is for a £300 gizmo that turns your phone into a satellite phone. The Bivy Stick is a two-way satellite communicator which works on the globally reaching Iridium network. It turns your phone and your tablet and your laptop if you're carrying them into a satellite communication tool. It has no activation fees. It provides SOS alerts and geolocation tracking plus on and offline mapping displays. If you'd like to buy it, there's a link to the website below. If you want to win it, easiest way to enter the competition is to join the Field Sports Nation and watch their special Tuesday night show, Field Sports Extra. Link to that below too. Now, a more serious word about Chris Packham. He really wants to finish us. He wants a summary judgment against us on the 6th of November 2023. That means he won't have to waste half a million pounds on bringing us to court in 2024 or 2025. Now, we want to get through this and our legal advice is that we can. Now more than ever, please join the Field Sports Nation. It's a one-day hearing and it's going to cost £40,000. We've already raised £20,000 thanks to those of you who have joined this year. We've had other offers of help from cash to pheasant poults for us to auction. Thanks for all of those. They come to five grand so far. We need the last 15 grand, which we can raise by getting just another 400 members. That's our target between now and November. Please sign up online or at the Game Fair. Thanks. Next, someone else will be hanging around the Game Fair Theatre. Tell security if you see him. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. With tens of thousands of pigeon shooters out around the country, it falls to Greater Manchester Police to try and close it down. James Crowther, who runs the Upperwood Estate, was out pigeon shooting with his friends at the weekend when they saw armed police behind riot shields advancing across the field towards them. The pigeon shooters unloaded and put down their guns, showed their certificates, but the police seized the shotguns anyway. Police told the shooters they were acting on a complaint. The farmer came to see what the disturbance was and told the police that he'd asked for the crop protection and given permission. Despite the illegality of their position, the police decided not to budge and have still not returned the shotguns. They've seized our guns on the, on the afternoon after the pigeon shooting, so we had to stop. So now we've no reason why they're holding them and we're struggling doing our gamekeeping now. A water company that owns large tracts of England's uplands thanks to privatisation plans to ban grouse shooting. United Utilities announces that all shoot leases on its land will be terminated when they next come up for renewal. The water company supplies water across the northwest of England. It announces that by 2027, at the latest, all licenses to shoot grouse on its land will not be renewed, closing down around 30 shoots. 
United Utilities has handed management contracts for some of its land to conservation industry bodies such as the RSPB, which has allowed wildfires due to poor management. Basque's North Director Duncan Thomas says United Utilities made the grouse more decision with no consultation with the wider rural community. You see behind me the mighty the the bowl and fells, including in the distance the incredible Crowsdale Mudell, the United Utilities Philadate, where their United Utilities have chosen to end the unique symbiotic relationship between yes, yes, water catchment, but also but farming and the shooting interests. They will undoubtedly damage, damage relationships, community and wildlife. Disgraceful. An MP is asking the government to take urgent action over the GL43 licence crisis. Sir Geoffrey Clifton Brown is the chairman of the All Party Parliamentary Group on Shooting and Conservation and he is Vice President of Basque. The MP for the Cotswolds raised the issue in Westminster as part of a journable debate. He says DEFRA took the decision in full knowledge of the shooting calendar when birds had already hatched and gave only a few days notice of a significant policy change. DEFRA says that circumstances did not permit consultation. This decision taken by DEFRA in the full knowledge of the shooting calendar and communicated to shoots, even though birds had already been ordered and were about to be released, has caused chaos around the country and has resulted in an animal welfare crisis, threatened redundancies, shoot closures, bankruptcies of rural businesses. In short, this is a disaster for rural affairs. The First Minister of Wales says he can't understand why farmers can't grow trees. NFU Cymru says proposals to turn 10% of all farmland in Wales over to trees did not make business sense. The new sustainable farming scheme is set to take effect in 2025 in Wales, replacing EU-era payments that have been worth over £300 million a year to Welsh farms. Mark Drakeford told BBC Wales, I think it will be a puzzle to many people, the idea that farmers can't grow trees. The chief executive of the John Muir Trust has been placed on leave. The owner of the controversial Quinag estate in the Scottish Highlands says it's carrying out an independent review and its chief executive, who's been in the job since 2019, is on leave while it conducts the investigation. The trust representatives declined to provide any further details of the ongoing situation, citing issues of privacy. Quinag estate has been at the centre of a media storm over whether John Muir Trust should kill so many deer that neighbouring estates can't offer deer stalking. John Muir Trust uses the massacre of Scottish deer as the basis for fundraising. The Countryside Alliance is launching the Hunting for Action initiative. It says it recognises the threats facing trail hunting and highlights how hunts and hunt supporters can take action to help secure hunting with hounds for generations to come. It says the field sports community must take action now to persuade politicians there's no case to strengthen the law. It says upholding the highest standards on and off the hunting field, promoting lawful hunting activities and offering reassurance that all hunting activity is legitimate will help to build public support for hunting with hounds and reduce the risk of hostile legislation. A Yorkshire shooting estate has raised £165,000 for Parkinson's UK. Water Priory held two clay shoots and a ball to support the charity. Shoot staff gave their time and help for free. Next year, the estate will be hosting a charity clay shoot and bush beaters ball in aid of the Countryside Alliance. Links below. Scottish firefighters say that Muirburn is an essential part of their toolkit to prevent wildfires. At a summit on wildfires in Scotland, land managers urged the Scottish Government to listen to fire experts and recognise the value. Deputy Assistant Chief Officer Bruce Farquharson pointed to the importance of tools like Muirburn and how it can help mitigate the wildfire risk. He's concerned about the Scottish Government's new restrictions on Muirburn, which are part of a bill being debated at Holyrood. He urges politicians not to ban or restrict Muirburn. The burning is done at very specific times of year and for specific purposes as well and the breeding season is always in mind when burning is conducted. When the fire service, a very respected organisation, is asking and pleading with the Scottish Government not to have this particular tool from the toolkit removed from them, it's going to be a very brave or a very silly politician who fails to listen to them. An American angler caught not just a fish, but a rod. Ben Kenny from Massachusetts went fishing in the Atlantic and landed a fishing rod with a giant striped bass still hooked up to it. 
He shared this video on Instagram saying it's one of the craziest things that has happened to him. And finally, sheep in Scotland are to get guard dogs to protect them from sea eagles. It's the experiment of Jonathan Ames, who helped us in our first episode of Field Sports Britain when he brought a cheetah to hunt rabbits in Essex. Now he runs Rothy Mercus Falconry in Inverness and has two Maremma sheepdogs, a mastiff breed from Switzerland bred to guard sheep from wolves. He hopes to train them to guard sheep from eagles. He has called his livestock guardian dogs Luigi and Peaches. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And as part of the Save David campaign, we are continuing to ask you to click like below this film on YouTube. Thank you. Next up, a word from Thomas Jacks. If you'd like to know more about Pulsar's range of thermal kit and what they have in store, we had exclusive access to their factories in a film we didn't put in Field Sports Britain, we just put it out there, link to it below. Now, a big part of the summer sporting scene is the Sim Day simulated game springing up all over the country. Dan Thor has a go on one in Devon. Are you a one-handed or a two-handed stuffer? Which is the best method of loading on a busy drive? We join Dan Thor and his partner Shannon on a simulated game day in Devon to find out. They are taking turns to shoot, which means each one will be loading for the other on alternate drives. First, there's a warm-up simulated pigeon stand where they load for themselves. It's chucking it down with rain, but that is not dampening anyone's spirits. Brought the weather with us, it's soaking wet today, but it makes it also fun in a way. Um, got to keep smiling, but I haven't really got the gear on today. Lucky enough, I, I had the little jet bike coat in the car, which does keep me dry, but yeah, no, Shannon's come along as well today, and yeah, we're both enjoying it so far. On the first drive, it was pigeons, and he simulated that very well, and we all had a good fun. I love days like this, and it gets you ready for the season, which is great. I just treat it as though I'm going for a little mess around at the playground, really. I just find a lot of people when they're shooting here, they're trying to get as many cartridges off they possibly can. But in my eyes, it's, it's you know, I want to get the practice in. So I'm, I'm sort of waiting for, for other people to shoot first and I'll sort of pick up the ones that are being missed, really, because obviously they're going to be a little bit trickier. So, yeah, I, I like that. But it's nice, like I say, to have, to have the missus with me today, Shannon, seeing her shoot, because she hasn't picked the gun up for a while. She's, she's been so busy. So, yeah, to see her shooting a few clays today, she's been mega so far, it's been great. Among the guns today is a 30th birthday party for local caravan engineer Matt. He's having a whale of a time. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I've been here twice now and it's very, very good. A lot of them are, are on my syndicate shoot, um, probably half of them uh, who I shoot with year out, year in. But I say we've got my dad and my cousin there and he's obviously a friend of mine. So it rains eased off now, which is not too bad. As long as you dress for the occasion, it's fine. We've got a spare, fair change of clothes in the car, so we're all good. Yeah, definitely a good birthday treat anyway. The day is run by Ian Henson, who says simulated game is a good way of diversifying the family farm. So uh, we started just after COVID. Um, COVID kind of delayed us a little bit, but say so we I had a few traps at home for personal use and we decided to get them out one day, have a little play and work, thought we could make something of this and give it a go really. A lot of game teams come down. This year we've had more stag do's than usual. So yeah, we've had a few travelling teams for that. And yeah, it's just a lot of um, a lot of friends just making a day out, really. Taking time out of their year and having a day with us and enjoying it. But um, yeah, a lot, a lot of game teams predominantly. Um, and we're starting to get a few more of the the more clay shooters rather than game shooters. Right. So we seem to, they're kind of venturing across to the driven, driven targets now. Uh, back on the MK38 Miracle today. I've been shooting the Brownings in the hide every now and then, but um, yeah, as I've been shooting this on the clays, I thought I'd better bring it today. 
Shooting, shooting okay so far, we just have to see what happens on this drive because these are pretty high. Okay. Little, uh, yeah, that's why I don't start slipping on this very wet gun. Did you enjoy that drive? Yeah, yeah. really good. You shot really well there. You shot really, really well. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep <laughs> it is. Time. But you know, you shot some good clothes. Ian makes the most of each setup by giving each pair of guns two numbers on each drive. So Dan and Shannon shoot one after the other from one peg. Then the whistle goes and they move to the other end of the line for another go each. Even though the pegs and the traps haven't moved, the guns get to see completely different targets and background. <laughs> well, you shot some good ones there. Yeah, you shot some really good ones. Yeah. I just say to them, like, it's good that they actually, you shoot the peg there, then you get to move up. Because you know when you go on some days, you get your peg, you get your peg, you both take it in turns, that's it. Yeah. But you've gone and shot the birds that are going that way, and then you're shooting the birds this way. Yeah, because there's some cracking birds coming. Oh, some awesome. Way, they? Picture you and James, all nice. There you go. Up there high, up there high. Go on. Oh. <laughs> Tricking you that one. With them loading for each other, it's an opportunity to compare the different loading styles. Dan uses both hands, loading one barrel with his right and the other with his left. You had a lot of shooting there, it was good, shot some good clays there. Now it's Shannon's turn to load for Dan, and her experience shows. She's using a one handed technique, stuffing both cartridges together in one smooth movement. Is it faster? Let's see. Yeah! Yeah, like I say, I'm not used to the load because, you know, quite unfortunately I'm always shooting, but yeah, you're... I prefer, uh, I prefer, to the old, I prefer yeah. that way. Yeah, so that I one. prefer two-handed, where you prefer the one-handed approach. So I guess, do you... You must spread them apart. Yeah, they're spread. God, that is, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with my approach of yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's best. Yeah, I I'll, I'll probably will say you're better at loading than me. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> we take a break from the rain. You can tell we're in Devon because the cream is on the scones first. Then we're off to the last drive, or the last four drives if you count the change of guns and pegs. Shannon's shoulder is feeling the strain of all those shots, but Dan has really found his form, shooting his favourite Maruku. His clothes have kept off the worst of the rain too. Apart from a soggy bum, we've had a great day, honestly, we've really had a, had a great day, even though the rain's been sitting non-stop. Uh, the clays that they've presented here have just been fantastic, literally he had a representing a pheasant, a pigeon, crossing birds that overhead from behind, it really has been a magical day. I'm not a, a, a mega sim fan, but I do like to do one or two a season. Like I say, it just gets your eye in, and, and you can't pheasant shoot all year round or game shoot all year round, so why not get on the clays and, and represent something you love to shoot? For more about Maruku and Browning guns, go to browning.eu, find Jack Pike clothing at jackpike.co.uk, and you can book a simulated game day at devonclaydays.co.uk. Thank you, Dan and Shannon. Next. Deborah Hadfield is in Northern Ireland looking at curlews. Curlews are a rare sight in Northern Ireland. Thanks to the work of gamekeepers and shooters, the number of chicks is increasing. In the Glenwary area of the Antrim Plateau, the partnership is a success story that is producing spectacular breeding results. The number of chicks successfully fledged has almost doubled from 2022 compared to 2021. Keepers recorded 69 fledged curlew chicks in Glenwary this season, building on last year's 28 chicks, which was itself a record. Last year we had an average of, I think it was four chicks per brood, which is unheard of in the island of Ireland. That does not happen uh, and it's, no, there's not, it's not rocket science at the end of the day. If you're able to, we're very good on fox control and crow control in particular. Three very good men underneath me and one man also doing crow control. So, you know, it's boots on the ground really from grassroots that are getting a lot of those results. Here in Northern Ireland, it's the work of the gamekeepers and shooters that protect wildlife, as in the rest of the UK. The main ways they do it is to look after the bird's habitat and control their predators. The Countryside Alliance says this is vital work. It's about striking a balance and you can't have one over competing on another. And that's really what Merlin uh, and other conservationists are seeking to do, is to make the balance that one, that, or sorry, that all 
can flourish, not just one. By no means does anybody want to see the end of any of the predators, but we just want to bring them into check, that's all, and, and give other uh, wildlife the opportunity to thrive. The number one factor I would find if you would do sensitive habitat management here, uh, sensitive grazing patterns and, and, and whatnot from the inception of the project without predator control, I would say you'd probably get 10% of the wildlife that we have now, if you're lucky. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very important element to, to it all. And again, it's, it's very contentious, but I always like to explain predator control as a little evil for a greater good. It's on moors like this, the vulnerable species like curlew need the most protection. Predators like foxes, rats and crows are their biggest threat. It's really a conversation that not many people are having now. They're not having a frank, open conversation of predation because it's so contentious. You know, you're controlling one animal to protect another and you're sort of acting as God nearly of, of trying to step in. But without our intervention and without the hand of man, we won't, be, we won't be able to deliver all these um, environmental benefits for all the species that we love. Curlew, grouse, golden plover, snipe, blackwing. Grouse are also thriving on the moors thanks to the work of gamekeepers. The Irish Grouse Conservation Trust says the conservation work on managed moors helps many other endangered species too. For Collier and uh, for Lapwing and other, other uh, birds that is, is, and wildlife is here, we have a very, very big population of hares and a big population of birds of prey uh, here. And it shows that in all things, whenever the management is increased, and the predators controlled that it benefits uh, the, the whole balance. Gamekeepers point to controlled burning as an essential tool for creating habitats for wildlife. We do a lot of controlled burning here, uh, another contentious issue, uh, controlled burning and a, num and a bit of flailing as well. Um, so we find that a combination of the two really brings a huge benefit for all wildlife and also for a grazing uh, element as well, very good for grazing animals like sheep, but also our hare population here as well. And we also hold 60% of Northern Ireland's grouse population in one small hill, right around 3,000 acres here, uh, and approximately 23% of um, Northern Ireland's curlew. Gamekeepers have transformed the wildlife life on these moors. Without their work, it would be a different story. The reason this is such a success is simply down to the fact that the ground is managed and we have such experienced and knowledgeable gamekeepers as, as Merlin. It's only through his and others' efforts that means that the, the balance is struck here and curlew and, and other wildlife can flourish and there's a balance right through predator control. So it is, and the work here it can only be described as fantastic. There's no nine to five hours uh, in achieving this. There's a, a big uh, commitment and effort uh, that's put in by the gamekeeper and the Irish Grouse Conservation Trust. That work has to be done. You know, armchair, armchair gamekeepers doesn't work. The RSPB have asked us on several occasions, oh, so how long would you think it would take for things to be lost? And not, no, no, no shadow of a doubt, and I'm not sort of trying to be this as a devil's advocate, but I would say in 12 months there wouldn't be a single curly chick left if we stopped the predator control in this area here. Hares would probably hang on probably for three years, but I would say probably less than five years' time there would be absolutely nothing um, because the level of predation pressure, particularly in, in Northern Ireland where we are at the moment, and a lot of parts of the country as well, in England, Scotland, Wales, I was lucky enough to work uh, in, in all the countries across the water. Um, the level of foxes now in the, in, the, in the countryside and generous predators is huge. Gamekeepers and shooters know that the conservation industry campaigns against their work, but they are determined to continue their efforts to help birds such as the curlew. Thanks all who took part in that. I think it shows well whether or not they're poisoning our waterways. United Utilities does seem to be planning to wipe out upland wildlife by getting rid of its grouse moors, which is unusual company policy. Now, from the future of the curlew to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Marchington, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up this week, Roy Martin Gunsmith reckons the best thing for a 410 is to chuck it in the bin. That's until he takes a lesson from small bore enthusiast Richard Gray and learns how to get the best out of the caliber. This one takes me back to my misspent youth, a collection of ingenious weapons that don't need gunpowder, from slingshots, firing arrows, to an electric-powered gauss gun. Trying out a more conventional Brocock Pathfinder air rifle, Andrew from AM Bushcraft is doing a bit of pest control, shooting rats, rabbits, pigeons and corvids around the farm. Meanwhile, Lank's vermin control is on a new permission, shooting rabbits with his Air Arms S510 and emphasizing the importance of carefully placed headshots for clean kills. Over in the States, MFK game calls are calling in coyotes, rather too successfully. This one runs in so close you could reach out and touch it. Johnny Carter tackles the Beretta World Sporting Championship, which means he has to shoot a Beretta. Unfortunately, the one he's brought along isn't working, but he has a cunning plum. Vlogger Suzanne O'Connor visits her cousin, who just happens to be a gamekeeper on the Isle of Butte in Scotland. It's fascinating to see how a non-shooter reacts to learning about the life and work of a keeper. And finally this week, gamekeeper John is sea fishing with friends on Anglesey, and they land a couple of huge taupe sharks. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, you can like us on Facebook and on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address to our wrist page, and we'll come back to you about this week. Field Sports Britain, it's out 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.